Yeah, good evening and welcome right here live from Perry F. Lattimore Stadium in Salisaw. Hi, Chris Chandler here along with uh, Skip Copeland and Miley Trent. Uh, embedded as we are in the stadium, we are in the bleachers uh, among the Broken Bow faithful who have made this trip to Salisaw. And uh, we're going to bring you this live stream game kickoff set for 7 o'clock tonight. And it's... Uh, no, about seven and a half minutes away or less. It is homecoming night here at Salisaw. Just finished those ceremonies. Uh, the Black Diamonds, uh, always a tough place to play, and they are coming off a big victory last week over the Stillwell Indians. And uh, one of the things to watch tonight for the Savages is going to be Cole Stevens or Steffens, but uh, it's, he had 195 yards rushing at 60 these last week. Savage, of course, a heartbreaking loss on their homecoming last week in the final, not in the final second, with no time left on the last second field goal and so teams are uh, one and one in district play and looking to uh, advance and get back into the district hunt savage gonna be uh, coming out of the tunnel in just a moment it's a windy night it is football weather folks it is actually a cool night uh, it's starting to be a cool night. You actually see some sweaters and uh, normal what you would consider football gear. That's good to see. And we are happy to bring you this broadcast. Thanks to our sponsors. And we are welcoming a new one this week. It's McCurtain County Propane as one of our full sponsors for the entire school year. So uh, thank you for your support of Broken Bow Savage Athletics, Academics, and uh, the whole program. Really proud of what they've done. Of course, the Savage Pride Marching Band uh, you hear there in the background, they will be competing tomorrow. Uh, they are going to be marching tomorrow, so this is a uh, long trip for them, and then I guess a uh, short night of sleep somewhere, and they're getting up in the morning and traveling to, uh, where are they going, Miley? Uh, Tishomingo for a competition tomorrow. Glad to have them here. And so uh, as you see the Savage Captains walking onto the field. And... They're going to have the coin toss in just a moment. Again, thanks to these sponsors for bringing you these. And I'm uh, going to go away to a quick commercial break and be right back. Or, yeah, we'll take a quick commercial break and be right back with the coin toss. You're watching Brogobo Savage Football on the Brogobo Network. for over 80 years. Located just five miles east of Broken Bow, they're your go-to destination for all your lumber needs with everything you'd expect from a big store with the added charm of hometown service and competitive pricing. Need your materials delivered? Bailey Lumber Company will help you with convenient delivery options. Bailey Lumber Company, supporting the savages. Well, there you see the savage captains of the center field are outnumbered as uh, the Black Diamonds have brought their, I would assume, their entire senior contingent. It is homecoming night, so that's kind of a standard thing. And uh, Savage is out there for the coin toss. These teams are, again, both uh, still in the, obviously, two games in, still in the hunt for the playoffs and possibly even a, a district title, although... The hard part for the Savages is going to come at the uh, end of this regular season when they have to go to Ada and Poto. Uh, both of those games will be on the road. Here's the coin toss. Looks like it was, uh, well, there's no indication for the officials yet. Framden Mulkey uh, discussing it with the referee there. And waiting for the indication. With this win, I, you know, that's, that's the thing. It's a little bit of a difficult decision to make normally you would want to defer and maybe uh wait to the second half but there is a stiff wind blowing and that might not be true and so it looks like Salisaw did win the toss deferred and so Brokobo will receive and then Salisaw obviously would take the north end of the stadium because there is a rather strong and perhaps bitter north wind blowing down Perry F. Lattimore Stadium again this is uh kind of typical for Broken Bow as uh, most of Oklahoma is known to be windy where the wind comes sweeping down the plane and that is happening here maybe not the plane but certainly down the middle of the field see the Savage cheerleaders I, I, again Savage dance team cheerleaders forming the uh, spirit line over there and just a moment before they come out of that tunnel and get things underway 311 and ticking to kick off I have a couple of other games uh, on the slate tonight. There's some District 4A4 games, but there is a big one. Uh, I think it is at Wagner, as it is going to be Cushing at Wagner in a district game that is also a rematch of last year's 4A state championship. Of course, won by Wagner after getting a – the Bulldogs got a shellacking by Cushing in the early part of the season, the regular season, and then uh, Broken Bow product Dale Condict coaching that 
Wagner Bulldog team went to the state championship and beat that uh, tough Cushing team. Of course, you saw that Cushing team uh, in Broken Bow's playoff streak in the first round last year as they had to go up against number one in week one. And Savage is looking to, to try to avoid that this year. Uh, I'd like to get up in the middle or top of those district rankings and not have to play a number one seed. Uh, not really a seed, a number one placing district team, a district champion in the first round of the playoffs. Right now, the uh, the immediate mission is to defeat this Salisaw Black Diamond team on their home field, and that has never really been an easy task. What well, an interesting thing about this field uh, and, and this team is Broken Bow. Uh, the longest completions from scrimmage both occurred in consecutive years against the Salisaw Black Diamonds, and uh, for 93 yards on each of those, one in, uh, I believe it was 2018, one in 2019. And so Savages, uh, you know, it'd be nice to break that record tonight. And here come the Savages. One of the things the Savages, they look ready to play. The little beat as they're coming out of that locker room. Boy, I will relate an incident that happened to us, stopped at a, a local franchise to uh, eat dinner as uh, we were served, and then the, both the Broca Bow cheerleaders and the dance team came in, and the lights went out. The power went off about halfway through that, so uh, I certainly hope the, those girls actually got to eat. Hope the Savages play lights out tonight, see the kickoff receiving team getting their instructions. And one of the, a couple of the key points for the Savages tonight, make, make your blocks. That's got to be number one. That's the basis, really the basis of all offense is that offensive line. And then on defense, make sure tackles. And that's something the Savages have worked on all week. As they cannot let anybody get loose. And one of the things that you know, certainly don't want to let uh, Mr. Stevens, and I, again, if you're, a, I don't know, why, they do have their own live stream. If you're a Salisaw fan, though, it's a S T E P H A N S, and it's either Stevens or Stephens. I'm going to call him Stevens, but Cole Stevens, and you know, kid made six touchdowns last week. Don't want to give him an opportunity to do that this week. You do want to give an opportunity for number three for Rokabo to get into the end zone once again, and uh, just a dazzling return, putt return last week by Kyron Whitfield, and uh, let's see if they kick it to him. If it gets up on that wind, even if they try to kick it to the 30, it may sail into the hands of Whitfield. Here's it, and it is. It is going to be returnable, and it's Whitfield. No, sorry, that's going to be Tenejero takes it, trying to get across the field, get the line set up, and lateral pursuit catches him, and so he gets a, yeah, basically no yards. And there is a penalty at the end of that, and it was uh, right there at the point of tackle. That may be 59. It's going to be 15 against Brokeby. I was going to say could be a lady at her face mask, but... No luck for Brokabo, so not even the first place of scrimmage. Already have some yellow on the field. And so Savages receive a uh, yeah, welcome to Salisaw with a yellow flag, and they want to avoid those for the rest of the night. So instead of setting up shop at their own 25-yard line, it's going to be marked back to about the 15, and that's where they'll start first and 10. Looking at... And everything where I mentioned, everything starts with that savage line. You're going to have McDaniel at center. Okay, Josh at the guards. I'll be uh, back with the rest of the offensive line after this. Oh, nice split backs, actually. Uh, it looks like Whitfield. And it's a direct snap to Whitfield. They get the ball in his hands and watch right up the middle. Has a lot of yardage and got all the penalty yardage back and maybe a little more. That was a nice run, and it was just a straight formation set up almost like the old Veer, except it was a T formation, just three. It's kind of like the Wildcat with two guys on both sides of Clay, and they snapped it directly to Whitfield. He took off. Let's call that a gain of 10, back to the original line of scrimmage, and so it is going to be a play marker says one on the side, but it's actually second and 10 for Broken Bow. And they may go with that some more. Bailey also in the backfield there, along with Clay and Whitfield. And they're having a little difficulty getting set up. Mention you have, uh, yeah, now they get. I don't know what the delay was, but it's second and 10 for Broken Bow, the 25-yard line. 
handoff. Bailey immediately met in the backfield and tries to go forward, gets maybe a yard or two, and then he's pushed backwards. And he was actually uh, met about two yards deep in the backfield. It was just a strength of Quinlan Bailey that actually got anything out of that. Let's see if they give him. They should give him his forward progress for a gain of two. Well, a gain of one. Yeah, I thought he made it to 27. And uh, uh, 26 and a half. Let's go. So now it's going to be uh, lone in the backfield. It's going to be Clay as they split receivers out to the Twins to the far side and, and to this side. Leave one man in the backfield. Throw downfield. Has a receiver caught. Whitfield on the side. 40 first down. Yard to Jan Moore. That was a beautiful route and a perfect throw by Anthony Clay as Kyron Whitfield with his first catch moves the chain. Savage's first and 10 at the 40-yard line. Nice play. And he kind of got lost there along the sideline. Here's a... Another run by, oh, no, no, no. That hit Reese Hoover right in the back of the legs, and I hope he gets up. Yeah, that's a, and that is the most dangerous play for an offensive lineman, which you're making a block and get hit from behind. It can knock a knee or an ankle out of alignment. Good to see Hoover back up, but that's going to be a stop for no gain on the run by Bailey, and it's going to bring up second and 10. Sam Hurst in the slot. Clay and Bailey in the backfield. Twins split out to this side. Handoff, Bailey lead play this time. Bounces off a... Uh, uh, one tackler, but does not get through a second. Another short game. That's going to bring up third and about nine. Let's see where they – wow. That is a poor spot. <laughs> he was – I mean, Bailey obviously got to the 41 anyway. Uh, it would be third and long anyway, but this is past this situation. Keep in mind, a stiff wind, and it just got a little stiffer as the wind's blowing probably about 30 miles an hour in the face of Clay. Looking at the sideline for signals. Twins split to the, or no, single receiver split the far side. Twins to the near side. Tight end in the formation. There's an extra blocker back to pass. Has time to throw. And now he's pursued. Looking, looking, fires it. Oh, did it. Ho, oh, off the turf right in front of Kyron Whitfield. That was decent protection by the Savages. It looks like they threw a tight end or actually made him move Bailey up to a tight end position to get some extra blocking. And it did work as he had some time. Just unable to get the ball to Whitfield. Open for just a little bit. Pretty well covered. But again, that is a throw against a uh, wind that's blowing in your face. So Savage is now facing fourth attempt. Got to be forced to punt. As looks like I believe that is Stevens back deep for the Black Diamonds. Again, punting into a wind. The, 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 Rugby-style kick uh, actually has an advantage on this as it doesn't hang up there in the air and gets down quickly, has a nice savage roll. Not a very long punt, but there is no return. And so pretty good field position for the Black Diamonds to set up first and 10 between their 30 and 40 around the 36-yard line. They managed to give up a couple of first downs to the Savages, managed to hold. Even while the Savages started that drive at their own 15-yard line following the penalty, and so did manage to get at least into that other end of the field. Let's see how the Black Diamonds come out. Quarterback in the shotgun, single back in the backfield with him, and it looks like it's going to hand off up the middle looking for running room, and he's met and dropped immediately. Ball, is that a ball on the ground, or is that just people diving in there? Yeah, it was a loose ball. Managed to regain possession of it, but that ball was knocked loose by Broken Bow. And he was hit at the line of scrimmage. The, the fumble actually gained, well, a little across that. The fumble actually gained an extra yard. So bring up seven, seven in a short eight or long seven. Let's call it second seven and a half for the Black Diamonds. Shotgun, same formation. Shotgun, well, no, they actually have a slot back or an extra blocker in there. This may be a passing situation. He does drop back to pass. He's looking. He's a little, under a little pressure from Brokobo. Is flushed out of the pocket. Throws it downfield and way out of bounds. Coverage by Frazier on the far sideline. That's some nice pressure from the near side. Jace Anderson got loose from his blocker and chased the quarterback across into the far side. Incomplete pass brings up a third and seven. The line to gain is uh, the 46, 45 and a half. And so maybe expect the Black Diamonds to go into a passing situation, or not a passing situation, to pass again. It's obviously a passing situation. Back to pass. Looking downfield. 
And throws it long, high ball goes way. It wasn't caught. It was incomplete, broken up by Whitfield. Nice job along the sideline as Whitfield had the receiver covered along the boundary, and that's going to bring a fourth and long and put the Black Diamonds in a punting situation. Good defense. And so Savage Punt return team comes onto the field, as does the Black Diamond punt team. Nice job. So the, the team's trade possessions. Well, let's just see. Let's don't assume anything. This is Salisau, but uh, – they could fake it. But, again, they do have a stiff wind at their back, and uh, if they can kick it, they could probably uh, have the ball sail down around the 20, 15-yard line. So I think they would take the field position advantage. And we will find out. And whistle dead. Looks like it's going to be a delay of game. Too much time, and so that's going to move it back. And if they were thinking about faking it earlier, they probably definitely aren't now. As it's going to move it outside the chains, it'll be fourth and 12 for the Black Diamonds. Again, tough situation when you're opposing team. Whitfield back to return. And Savages have everybody else. Oh, they do split out twins to both sides. So let's see what happens. Here's the catch, the kick, and it is a high punt. It's going to be fielded by Whitfield. Takes possession at it, breaks one tag, just spins around. A nice run to gain about five, and there's a penalty on the field again. Flag right at the 26-yard line. Let's see what it is. And assuming it might be it gets Broken Bow. Well, while they're determining that, let's take a quick break and hear from our sponsor. You're watching Broken Bow Savage Football on the Broken Bow Network. No surprise, the penalty gets Savages back to uh, take the snap, hand off. It's going to be Bailey. Bailey has some running room. Watch out. He breaks it. Tackle. Just kind of strung it out. Pretty good blocking as he had a little bit ahead of steam when he made first contact and enough to move the chains. That was a great job at a line. And a nice tough run by Bailey. Savages get their third first down of this game. They have had success moving the ball. It's just the field position that has been killing them. New set of downs, handoff, Bailey again, has another block, spins off one tackler and eludes a couple of more. That's a tough run by Bailey, picks up about four yards. And he literally did a nice spin move after contact and then just kind of kept his legs churning. Uh, gain of three, second and seven. Again, Bailey hit in the backfield. But breaking tackles is uh, advantageous. Looks like they've got Rocky Baker in there at the slot along with Whitfield, uh, now Whit splitting Whitfield to the far side along with Heath. Tenejero to the near side. It's going to be a toss sweep. Bailey looking for running room. Has it and makes the contact and drives his legs. And close to the first down. Going to be about two yards short. That was Bailey lowering his shoulder at the end of that run, delivering the blow, running through the tackler. And so falls forward for another yard. And I said third and two. It's a third and a, yeah, let's call it two. Line to gain is the 40-yard line. So ball right at the 38. That is two. Congratulate myself on that math. Here, uh, Bailey back in the backfield again, and this time Hurst is the lead blocker. Hurst gets a block. Bailey gets enough for the – yeah, no, he doesn't. Wrong. He actually loses yard. I, I confused the 35 for the 40. Thought he might be getting enough for the first down. Instead, he was hitting the backfield. And that's going to be uh, – does get back to the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to be fourth and two. Savage is in the punt team on. So it's both teams – Able to get defensive stops on the first, now three possessions, two for the Savages, one for the Black Diamonds. And so, Tenejero back to punt into this wind. And going to roll out the side. Has a lot of time. Now kicks it high. It's caught. And the ball's on the ground. Wow, that was a, again, it has been lucky bounces tonight thus far in this first quarter for Salisaw as two fumbles went right back up into the hands of the uh, 
ball carrier that fumbled. That could have been disastrous to Salisaw and a great turnover for the Savages as it was. It gained an extra two yards once again for the Black Diamonds, and so they'll set up their own 40-yard line. 6.31, and uh, as soon as they wind the clock, it will be ticking here in the first quarter. You score 0-0. Black Diamonds with their second possession of this game. Twins split out to the near side. Hand off, trying to string it out to the side, gets the boundary, pursued by Rupp, and gets past one Savage. Uh, Frazier made contact, but not before. About a six or seven yard gain. Let's see where they mark it. Maybe enough to get close. Uh, looks like eight yard gain. Eight yard gain, very close to the first down. And so, uh, pretty good job. Uh, Max Rupp was pursuing him, breathing down the back of his neck, but forced him outside. Outside contained, not able to get him down until after eight yards. Second two. Might expect a run play up the middle this time, and that's what's going to happen. Quarterback keeper and goes off tackle and breaks one tackle, gets enough for the first down. And so, with the first time tonight, the Black Diamonds will move the chains, but they will also move into Savage territory. They'll have first and 10 at the Savage 48-yard line. Ah, 47-yard line. So first and 10, 47, Savages now need to stop. And I tell you, I, they did kick a couple of field goals last week, uh, Salazar that is, but uh, with this wind, Savages probably want to force them to stop right now. Here's a run, bounces outside, has open running room, and gets to uh, Forced out of bounds by Frazier, but not before making about eight, nine yards. Let's see where they mark it out. He definitely was out of bounds. Just hope it was before he got enough for the first down. And it is. Mark forced out of bounds at 38 yard line. So that's going to be fourth and, or sorry, second and one. And again, last time uh, they just ran a quarterback keeper. You might expect to see another run up the middle. Nope. Pass out into, into the boundary. And running room, and gets right past the corner and into the end zone. That was a mistake by the Savages as that was thrown inside right at the uh, hash mark. And a uh, missed assignment. He managed to get the receiver, managed to get to the corner, turn the corner, go up the sideline into the end zone. And so the on a second and short, the Black Diamonds draw first blood in this contest, 6 nothing. With 5.26 left in this first period of play. Looks like, I believe, I believe that's Martinez attempting the extra point. Wow, it was almost blocked by uh, Rubb, but it is good. Splits the upright. 7 0 is your score. 7 0. Savages Trail will get a chance to try to even it up after this b break. We'll be right back. You're watching Brooklyn Savage Football on the Brooklyn Network. Oh, no. Are you okay, Mike? Yeah, I got a pretty big fender bender here. Don't worry, State Farm's got you covered. <sighs> That's great to hear. Robin, what's going on? We're gonna get you a tow truck, Mike. Thank you. Little fender bender going on. Fender bender. Fender bender. Fender bender. Fender bender. Everybody remain calm. No reason to panic. Go with the one that's here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Evan Smalling at 580-584-7277. Welcome back. 7-0 the score. Savages uh, giving up a touchdown after stopping on the first possession. Again, thanks to Cheryl's Pharmacy, another one of our sponsors, a longtime sponsor of Brombo football. And uh, as you can see on the ad there, uh, established in 1950. Interesting enough, that was the year that the Brogan Bow football program was established with that first game against the Warriors. And then uh, I think they played the second game a couple of years later in 1917. But uh, a lot of football here for Savages, thanks to Cheryl's. Kickoff about to commit. Savages back to receive and would like to even this up. Long kick's going to be returnable. It looks like this one's going uh, to Whitfield. Watch out, folks. 45, or sorry, 35, 40. Whitfield quickly up the sideline and puts the Savages in their best by far their best starting field position of this game as they'll get the ball at their own 41-yard line, see if they can do something with it. Again, if you've noticed a little difference, but I don't know in the sound or in the, uh, in the view, we are in the stands at the top of the visitor stands here at 45-yard line at Perry F. Lattimore Stadium. Outdoors, and it is a football. It's a nice, crisp night, a little bit chilly in uh, short sleeves, and so... Football weather. 
And it's that time of year in Oklahoma. Savage is first to 10, looking back to pass, throws it, and it's caught. Nice pass. Good route, just a quick, it looked like a, just a slant, or sorry, a hook route. As went about five or six yards, turned around, and the ball was there. Again, I, I know a timing route. They're all timing routes, but the ball was thrown to a place the receiver wasn't. And the receiver turned around and came back to it. That was well thrown by Clay and a good catch. The results in a second and four. Gain of six, handoff up the middle. Bailey, watch out! Bailey has a first down, and ooh, he was he was an ankle tackle away from breaking it as it looked like the Salisaw defense. Well, I don't know if he got the – let's see. Yeah, come on, guys. He got the first down. I was going to say he got the first down. But they knocked his legs out from undering. But had they not, that opened the, – the middle of the field was wide open. There were no safeties there. They were out on the edges. That might have been a, you know, break one tackle, and Bailey's going all the way on that one. Bailey has a lot of yardage so far. About 30. Let's see if he can get some more here. First and 10, Rokumbo. They are now in Black Diamond territory. Clay talking to his uh, charges. Gets a block. Now he's running, and Clay may take it. First run by Clay as he gets out of bounds. Wow, there was contact right at the line of scrimmage at the boundary. And uh, Clay ducked his shoulder, got a yard, but no more. And so second and nine. That was decent protection for Clay. Just uh, didn't have a receiver open. And again, he, I mean, you know, just a sophomore quarterback, but a veteran by now. And he knows it's a little difficult to throw into this wind. Going to take another look at it. This time he's flushed out of the pocket, and he falls forward to the 49. And that's going to be a loss of one. And that's going to bring up third and 11. So pressure collapsed, and... Uh, the, po- the, the back part of the pocket collapsed, and so Clay stepped up into it, but not able to find a receiver quickly and was brought down in his own backfield. First sack of the game results in a third and 11. Savages are in Black Diamond territory. Need 11 yards here. Now back to pass again, looking downfield, and now he sees some running room, and Clay gets across the 45, and close to the first down. Did he get it? Yes. Very close to the first down. I believe he got it. Let's see where he's at now. Marked down at the 43. Man, that's close. No, at the, marked down at the at the 40. <laughs> Fourth down. I thought he fell across. I mean, I thought he fell, he was falling across the 40. He was down at the 38. Let's see. They're going to. Take a timeout, talk things over. We'll take one as well and hear from our timeout sponsor, Evan Smalling State Farm Insurance. And they'll be back with more action. You're watching the Broken Bow Savages on the Broken Bow Network. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Evan Smalling in Broken Bow today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome back. Savage just talking things over. Again, thanks to Evan Smalling State Farm Insurance right there across from the high school. Uh, also, uh, now a Rocket Mortgage sponsor as well. Savages look like they are going for it. Offense coming back on the field. And so it's going to be Clay in the backfield. Champagne split to the far side. Whitfield in the backfield with Clay. Rupp. Split out to the near side right on the boundary, and they have uh, Bailey in the slot. Handoff, cross buck, and it's Whitfield drives forward enough for the first down and more. Still going all the way across the 35. First down, Savages. Gutsy call, gutsy run by Whitfield, and that's just power football. A lot of action in there. That blocking scheme is that Bailey came across toward the near side, almost like a trap block. Well done. First, first, fourth down conversion by the Savages in this game. They are still driving. There's a lead play, and they want to get, uh uh-oh, balls on the ground. And wisely, after it didn't bounce right up, that's a wise decision by Whitfield just to get down on it and not have the turnover. That's going to bring a second, though, in a miles. That's a loss back to the 42-yard line. And so Savages now look like, once again, maybe in passing situation. Definitely in a passing situation, but maybe throwing the ball. The wind did die. During that commercial break, the wind died down for about 25 seconds and then picked back up. 
And I was thinking uh, it would be nice if it would just uh, stay a little flat. A little chilly here. I mean, I'm enjoying it, though. It is football with it. Twins split out to the far side. Bailey in the backfield with Clay. Clay looking downfield, steps up. Now he's going to have to run. Gets past one would-be tackler. Spin move. Clay all the way down the sideline, almost to the original line of scrimmage. See where they mark, and that brings up a manageable third down. I believe it's going to be third and 11. Let's see where he uh, is marked down, and that is third and 11. 136 and ticking here in this first period. Savages trail 7 to nothing, but are driving. And again, uh, started off with good field position off that Whitfield return to their own 40-yard line. Did manage to move the chains on fourth, maybe in fourth down territory again. Be nice if you could, didn't have to make that decision. Could just get it here. Let's see what they do. Champagne again split out the far sideline. Oh, trips again. as uh, are two backs in the backfield, and they're going to hand it to Whitfield, and he's looking to run. Goes outside, gets to the corner, but not nearly enough for first down. Gets about two or three yards past the original line of scrimmage. Not original line of scrimmage, past the line of scrimmage. And so picks up, well, actually, no. He, he fell down. I lost track of him when he was right there on the boundary. He fell forward and managed to tiptoe down that sideline and get a good chunk of it. So that brings up a fourth and four. Definitely four down territory for the Savages as they converted the last one. Let's see what they do here. And again, uh, now, if you're thinking about, well, why don't they kick a field goal? Well, that's a very long field goal for a high school kicker under normal circumstances, about 45 yards. Or, yeah, 45 yards, and this is into a 30-mile-per-hour win. Savages lining up, looking to go for it. They need four yards. Snap, handoff, Whitfield cutting up the middle, Dedman's shoulder down, and he is close. Let's see where he got. I think he – it's going to be measurement time, I think. Let's see where they mark it. Right on that uh, center of the field. Man, Savage is, oh, man, it's coming back. So it doesn't matter if they got it or not. It's a uh, holding. I'd, I'd be shocked if it was defensive holding. It's going to be against the Savages, and they're going to move it back. And Well, they're going to measure, probably going to ask for measurement first. Then, if the Savages uh, did get enough yardage for the first down, then they'll move it back. Let's see what happens. Nope, never mind. I guess they didn't have enough yardage to uh, to make it, and so that's going to be a turnover on downs. Penalty is declined. It's going to be Black Diamond football. So Savages, well, able to get, get a lot. They have a lot of yardage actually outgaining the Black Diamonds at this point, but the Black Diamonds managed to turn a uh, short field into a touchdown, and so... Salisaw leads 7 to nothing, just under a minute left first period, and they have the ball once again. This time deeper in their own territory, though. Not the Savages could either force a turnover or pin them back. Black Diamonds have one man in the backfield with quarterback handoff, uh, or fake handoff. Quarterback keeper runs into Bailey, but not before, uh, and Bailey brings him down, but not before he gains about five yards. And so, I'm sorry, fell forward. Let's call it seven yards. They make it second and three. Once again, the, there's 20 seconds left on the play clock, 30 on the game clock, so this is likely to be the last play of the uh, first period. Well, let's see. Snap, handoff. Oh, collision. He's short of the 35-yard line, and so that's going to be, I believe, short of a first down, and that's probably going to do it for the first quarter. Let's see where they mark it. Nope, he did get it. Wow. Yeah, nice spot, and so... Uh, Still have 11. Yeah, the clock shows 11.8 seconds left, but the Black Diamonds are already walking toward the end of the field, and they're going to run the rest of the clock out. That's going to do it for the first period of play. Black Diamonds have the ball in their own territory, first and 10. They lead 7 to nothing. We'll be back with second quarter action after these messages. You're watching Broken Bow Savage Football on the Broken Bow Network. At McCurtain County National Bank, we are continually seeking ways to meet the changing needs of our customers. We offer a full range of services, such as free checking, online and mobile banking, as well as great rates on cabin and construction loans. We're providing results through better service while giving you a greater value for your dollar. Visit us on the web at mcnbonline.com. McCurtain County National Bank in Idabel, Broken Bow, Hochitown, and Valiant. 
They've been supporting the Savages for a very long time. Bailey Lumber Company, a family-owned tradition in Broken Bow for over 80 years. Located just five miles east of Broken Bow, they're your go-to destination for all your lumber needs with everything you'd expect from a big store with the added charm of hometown service and competitive pricing. Need your materials delivered? Bailey Lumber Company will help you with convenient delivery options. Bailey Lumber Company. First 10, drop back, rolls out to the side, throws it out of the flat, caught at the 40, 45, on near midfield. Has his legs taken out by Whitfield, and uh, Frazier up top, but not before getting enough for a first down, so the Black Diamonds are rolling, and that's a, that perimeter passing game has been the most effective play for the Black Diamonds. They have completed the ball outside the hash marks, actually near the boundary, and managed to turn it into a lot of yardage on Brokenbow. They may go back to that. Savage is doing fairly well in the interior of the line against runs and haven't given any deep passes, but uh, having trouble on the boundaries. Here's a run, and he's pulled out of the backfield by Rupp. That's a tackle for loss to the max. Nice job by the Savage outside linebacker, and that sends him back to their own inside, their own 45, to their own 46-yard line. And that's a good way to start this series for Brokobo, move them back and force them to throw. I would like you to remind you now that the quarter has changed. It is the Black Diamonds going into that stiff wind, and that can affect the way the ball moves after it comes out of the quarterback's hands. He grows out to the far side, looking, looking to throw it downfield, and it's intercepted! Pulled out of all, watch out, it's Whitfield! 40, 35... A great break on the ball from Kyron Whitfield. And that could be a game changer. It's certainly a momentum changer as he just pulled that ball. He read the quarterback's eyes, broke on the ball, pulled it out of the air, and tiptoed down the far sideline. Huge play by Whitfield. And now the Savages set up their, now they're definitely their best field position to start off as they are inside the 40-yard, well, okay, I was going to, I saw the lineman walking back and inside the 40-yard line of the Black Diamonds at the 37. First and 10, Brokobo, 37-yard line off the Whitfield pick. 11.08 left to go in the first half. Savages trail 7-0, looking to even things up here. I realize I never did. Watch him go on the field. I never did announce the tackles in the lineup. That would be... Zamudio and Reese Hoover at the tackles for the offensive line. Let's see if they give some protection or blocking here as the ball comes. Oh, wow, there was a nice block on that far side, and it was sprung. Ooh, that looked awkward as Clay that pops back up. And, uh, yeah, Clay, he's okay. I just saw Reese Hoover. I think that was Hoover on that far side just pancake one of the uh, linemen or linebackers in about five feet deep in the Savage backfield, knocked him flat and that was the key block that sprung Clay. Nice pick up on first down brings up second and six. That snap was slightly bobbled. Bailey in the backfield. Hurst in there as lead blocker. Hurst through the hole and Bailey follows him but not for much. Maybe got a yard maybe didn't get any. Yeah, Let's call it a no gain. That's going to bring up third and seven. Or sorry third and six. Again, Savage is in four-down territory, but you don't want to have to make that decision. You'd like to move the sticks. You'd like to get it in the end zone. I think Savage haven't, haven't thrown it downfield yet, but this is the first possession with the wind at their back. May see a long pass from Broken Bow. They uh, have the advantage of the wind, and that is a big advantage tonight. Yep, another one of those formations where you have Whitfield and Bailey both in the backfield. It's going to be a balls on the ground recovered by Salasov. That was Clay put it into the... Uh, Hands of Bailey and then pulled it back out and then uh, just lost the handle on it. So uh, that's disastrous. Uh, after the interception by Whitfield, Savages turn it back over. And so it's going to be the Black Diamonds that come away with the turnover, equaled it up at one each. And so Salisol will have a first and 10 at their own 37 yard line. Receivers split out to both sides, back in the backfield. And it's quarterback keeper up the middle looking for running room, has some, gets all the way to the 40 before he's brought down. So let's call it a gain of three, bringing up a second and seven. The line of gain is the 47-yard line. Salisa, so, so you know, the black, and again, the Black Diamonds may be content this quarter 
to just run the ball as that is. I mean, they've thrown it once in this in this in the second period, and it was intercepted by Kyron Whitfield. May not want to take the uh, risk of putting the ball in the air again. And yeah, a gainer of three. Do have twins split out to this side? Uh, that's going to be a handoff. Looking to get the boundary, and oh, nice tackle at the line of scrimmage. That was Whitfield coming up on run support. Puts a shoulder into the knee or the uh, thigh pad of the running back and stops him for no gain. Nice play, nice run support from your safety. And so well read by Mr. Whitfield. That brings up third and six. And again, if they don't uh, convert here, the Black Diamonds are going to have to punt into that wind. And so Savages certainly want to get another stop. They'd like to have another pass float up into that wind and another pick perhaps for six points by the Savage secondary. And it looked like there was a penalty on that play. That might be illegal procedure. No, it's offsides against Brokobo. Bit on the hard count. And so it's not enough for the first down, but it makes third down much more manageable. Instead of third and six, it's going to be third and one. So you got to keep, you got to play the middle game as well. Savage is now looking at uh, third and one, and that may change the play calling for Salisal. They may go with a power package. Well, they look like they have the same formation. May just be trying to run it over the middle. Let's see what they do. Snap, handoff up the middle. Oh, he's met, and a good contact in the backfield by, I believe that was Bailey, but does manage to fall forward with enough yardage to probably get the first down. It's marked at the 40, just one. Let's see. Uh, it is not. They are going to have to measure this, folks. Let's see where this is. I can't see where the I can't see where this is the chain, but it looks like it's midway between the 45 and the 50. And if so, that's not enough for the first down. That'll bring up fourth down. Let's see. I don't know why you would have to. Okay. Well, the ball, yeah, the ball is in the middle of the 40 on the field in the middle, and that's going to be a first down. Yeah, I say the ball is in the middle. The point of the ball is in the middle of that hash mark, and on the sideline, the chain was at the front of that hash mark, and that results in a first down just barely. So, a nice play on third down by the Savages, but after giving up the, the five-yard offsides penalty, it's enough to get a first down, moves the chains, and the Black Diamonds have another set of downs. Still on their own end of the field as we run down to eight minutes left in this first half. Salisal with a 7 nothing lead. And look like they're going to roll back, try to pass again. Rolling out, rolling out, looking, and he's going to be trying to run. Oh, he's dropped down by – who was that? Kyle – who was it? Oh, that was Kyle Cupid. I saw the 60. I didn't see the three, but he literally ran down that quarterback. Man, he's fast. That's some good pressure and a good job of pursuit and staying with the pursuit. And so uh, it's not officially not a sack as he did gain a yard. But just a yard, bringing up second and nine. So let's call it a tackle for very short game by Cupid. Run up the middle, and this time he's brought down once again. And that was Brandon that time. So Savage defensive ends having some success as that was a two-yard game, bringing up third and seven. So third and seven from midfield. Brogobo would like to stop him here and get an opportunity to have a possession with the win once again. Job number one is don't uh, bite on the hard count, which they probably will go to again after success last time. Let's see. Nope. They're going to drop back. Play action. Pass. Looking to throw. Launches it. Has a receiver. Oh, wow. That was a beautiful pass. It was right in the hands of the receiver. Into double coverage as it was both Whitfield and Nocum were there. But the pass was right on the money, uh, and so a long pass against that wind. It hung up there, but only the second pass of this quarter, first long pass of this game, but it is uh, on target. It results in a first down in the red zone by the Black Diamonds. 6.20 and ticking in the first half. Salisal leads by seven and is threatening 
to score again, and then they're going to call a timeout, or somebody's going to call a timeout. Timeout on the field. We'll take one as well and hear from Evan Smalling, State Farm Insurance, our timeout sponsor, and then we'll be right back. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Evan Smalling in Broken Bow today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, Savage talking thing over, things over. There's a lot to talk about as they need to keep the Black Diamonds out of this end zone. First and 10 for the 12-yard line. And so let's see how Savages have been tough this season in the red zone. It's had a couple of goal line stands already, including one against McAllister. So. And Salsaw's good, but they are no McAllister. So let's see how the Savages react to this offensive series. Power package in as they have two lead blockers. Quarterback follows them in, and he's running the boundary and gets close inside the 10 to about the 7 or 6. Let's see where they mark it. And right at the 6-yard line. So let's call it a gain of 6. Brings up a second and four. And when I say they have the power package, you see there's number uh, in the backfield. You see number 44 and 64. 64 checked into the game as a back. He is behind the line of scrimmage, although he is a lineman, and that's just they're going to run again and follow him. Oh, nice job. Reaction by the Savages as they drop the quarterback for a loss. That was well read. I think that was Medoc in there on that tackle. Brandon in there as well. And possibly Bailey, but that was, uh, and that's the thing. When you have that power package, those linemen are big and strong, but they tend to be slower than a back, and so the backside pursuit can sometimes get there. It did that time for the Savages. That brings up a third down and about six. Same formation. Quarterback looking to follow them, and, oh, he's met by Bailey this time right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe got one, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Fourth down from the far sideline, or sorry, the far hash mark. And we may see the field goal unit come on for Salisaw, and that is what we're going to see. Win is dad down a little bit, but it is still definitely a factor in the kicking game. So it looks like they're setting up right at the 14-yard line with the tee, and so that will be a 24-yard field goal attempt. It is a right-footed kicker, and that's kind of a hard. That's at a sharp angle for a right-footed kicker, so. Uh, ball's up, and I believe it is good. It is. So, Savages uh, managed to hold them out of the end zone, but give up a field goal with 4.56 left to play. Score is Salasaw 10, Brokobo nothing. Savages will get the ball when we come back. You're watching Brokobo Savage Football and the Brokobo Network. Welcome back. Savages have some uh, ground to make up as they trail 10 to nothing. I mentioned the Savages have a lot of offense, managed to move the ball, get several first downs. In fact, I think they have six first downs or seven so far, but have had uh, been battling the field position disadvantage, and they did have an excellent drive inside the 30 earlier. And, uh, commit their only turnover of the game, but it was at a crucial time as they were in scoring position, just unable to convert. It's going to be, uh, they've been kicking it deep, so Whitfield may have a chance to return it as, uh, as may Tenhero. No, this one's going to go to the near side. Fair caught by, I believe, Nocum at the near side line. And so pretty good field position, though, as that's uh, right at the 40-yard line, I believe. Let's see where they mark it. Nope. 37. A decent field position for Broken, but lots of time left. 4.56 left in this half. Savages have all three of their timeouts, and so, and the wind at their back. And again, did move the ball last time, just unable to get it into the end zone. Let's see what they do now. And I mentioned that, you know, you saw the uh, the Black Diamonds throw a long pass against the wind, and maybe 
maybe inspire the Savages to do the same. Maybe try one with the wind. If they could give Clay enough time to uh, protect him long enough for the receivers to get downfield, they have a couple of deep threats. As they have, looks like Baker, Rocky Baker split out the far side along with Rupp. And I believe that Champagne and Whitfield to the near side looking a flushed out of pocket. Clay throws quickly and it's complete to Baker on the far sideline. At the 40, he's, uh, that's about four guys. It takes four guys to bring Rocky Baker down. Nice catch, nice route, nice throw, and he, a nice little run after the catch. Didn't net a lot of yardage, but uh, give him two yards a yak but enough to make it a second and five. Stays in bounds, clock continues to run, 4.30 left in this half. This time they're going to drop Baker back in the slot. Bailey in the backfield, and that's a, just a toss sweep to Bailey using Baker as a lead blocker. Bailey, enough for the first down and more across midfield. Nice run and a nice block on the lead. As they stuck Baker in that slot, just followed him in. A nice cut off the block from... Quinlan Bailey and the Savages move the chains. Have them all right, not across, right at midfield. So first and 10 from the 50. Clock continues to tick, 4.07 left. Play clock now at 16. Whitfield far sideline, fake the handoff, play action, and it's launched down the middle of the field, incomplete, intended for Champagne along the near sideline, well covered by the Black Diamonds. Does stop the clock with the incompletion. So it'll be second and 10 from midfield. And the wind is picked back up once again. And a little bit of a howling wind. And the wind is really picked up now. Uh, well, second and 10 for the Savages. Luckily, it is at their back. So play clock down to 13. Savages is going to have to get set and get things up. Bailey in the backfield with Clay. Split receivers, trip split out to the far side, single receiver to the near side. Those ball complete right at midfield. Rocky Baker goes across one guy, can't get. He lowered his shoulder, I think it, and I think that's actually a good spot. He was stopped just short of the 40, and that's going to bring up third and about one. That was a great route as they ran everybody off deep along, and then Baker came across the middle. Clay hit him on the crossing route. And then after it, uh, Baker lowered his shoulder trying to get a little extra, but that brings up third and one. Savages need to move this here, and they're going to have Whitfield in the backfield. Now they swing Bailey over to the far slot as lead blocker. Handoff. Whitfield gets yardage for first down and more across the 40, down to about the 37. Savages move the chains. And we'll get another four downs, 309 left in this half. We're going to using a lot of different weapons on this drive. As they've used Bailey, Baker, and Whitfield. And here's another pass as Clay drops back. Has time to throw. Long pass down the middle. Oh, a little overthrown as he has Champagne on the post route. And Champagne had a couple of steps on the defender. And I say it was overthrown. The ball went, it was uncatchable. It was a little over his head. But that might, be a, that might have had something to do with the wind which might have carried it another three or four yards. That was a good route by Champagne, though, as he was open and an excellent job of protection by the offensive line as the Clay had protection, had time in the pocket, had time for the play to develop and for his receivers to get found downfield. That's a good sign. The incompletion does stop the clock, and it just winds up. It makes a second and ten. Alone in the backfield this time. Clay looking, looking, throws it. First down and more. Complete. That, that looked like a helmet came back as Whitfield looked like helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. I, I don't know if there's a flag, but nice catch, nice route, nice catch by Whitfield. Good throw by Clay right on the money. Savages move the chains. This is a, fish, a very efficient-looking offense is really taking no time hardly off the clock. Still 240 left. It does stop on the out-of-bounds call. And so four more downs for Brokobo. Trip split uh, right off the and That's lead blockers for Bailey. Makes a cut. Comes back. Breaks a tackle. Gets across the 25. Good job of Bailey doing what he could as his outside uh, angle was cut off by a linebacker or a defensive lineman on the other side. So he cut it back inside. Got what he could. And what he could was about three yards. Nice pickup. Brings up a second and seven as the clock ticks to 220. 
Well, the Savage is, uh, yeah, that's wrong, I think. Clock shows the Savages have three timeouts left. I thought they called one. Can't be, but you know, they have at least two, so lots of time left for Broken Bow. Same formation. Protection. Looking downfield. Oh, tipped. As intended for Tenehero, I believe. And, and I don't even think it was a defensive back. Might have been a linebacker for the Black Diamonds. Got a hand on it. Just a well, right at two minutes. Of course, no two-minute warning in high school football, but uh, the clock has stopped anyway on the incompletion. That brings up a third and seven. So it's going to be Clay in the backfield with Bailey. Baker in the slot. Tenehero at the far side. Whitfield to the near side. Pass. Oh, caught! Whitfield makes a move at the five. First down. Out of bounds. Or sorry, at the ten. Makes a move towards the five. Out of bounds at about the six. First and ten for Broken Bow. Or sorry, first and goal for Broken Bow inside the ten-yard line. Beautiful route and a great throw threading the needle there. So 153. Lots of time left. Lots of time. Or two timeouts left for Broken Bow. So now they just need to stick it in the end zone. First and goal for the Savages from the eight-yard line. So not the six, the eight-yard line. Whitfield now in the backfield, along with Clay. To Aaron Heath. Oh, Whitfield, hole right up the middle, and he's into the end zone. That was just a handoff, simple play, followed the blocking. Nice job of moving out the defenders, and then Whitfield made one move. Juked one black diamond, and it was touchdown broken bow. 7-6 to six is your score, 147 left in the first half. Savages on a... Uh, 10 to 6. Sorry, 10 to 6 with 147 left. Savages used multiple weapons, and now they are going to. As the swinging gate comes back over to line up for the extra point. Not an easy extra point, though, as there's a crosswind. As you can see, the tassels on that goal post. Here's a kick, gets up, and it is good, though. 10 to 7 is your score. And you, <laughs> that ball went through the uprights and then went another 30 yards in the top of the other building. 10 to 7 is your score. Savages have answered. They will kick off when we come back from this break. You're watching Brokemo Savage Football on the Brokemo Network. At McCurtain County National Bank, we are continually seeking ways to meet the changing needs of our customers. We offer a full range of services, such as free checking, online and mobile banking, as well as great rates on cabin and construction loans. We're providing results through better service while giving you a greater value for your dollar. Visit us on the web at mcnbonline.com. McCurtain County National Bank in Idabel, Broken Bow, Hochitown, and Valiant. Broken Bow has answered. It's a three-point ball game. 147 left in this half. Savages marched a long drive. Started at their 37-yard line, marched 63 to eight yards downfield, capped off by an eight-yard run by Kyron Whitfield. That's uh, getting the ball in the hands of a guy that can do a lot of damage. Very impressive drive as uh, a couple of passes along that, and Clay had a good protection for the offensive line. And, you know, there may be fatigue may be a factor as the Savage offensive line able to prevent the rushers from getting in at Anthony Clay. He was able to sit in the pocket, watch, and uh, read off a couple of receivers. And as a result, there are seven points on the board for Broken Bill. Silver the kick, and he might sell this one into the end zone. He usually kicks him up into the sky, but he might try one. Nope, same place, and it may go out of bounds, and it will. Ball's caught on the Savage sideline. It's going to be a penalty, and so that's going to set up Salisaw. First and ten at their 35-yard line. Savage defense goes on the field, and this puts uh, South saw a little bit of a predicament. Savages, as a result, have a opportunity here. And South saw may be tempted to try to throw it downfield because of the success of that long pass that resulted in the field goal. But if they do, keep in mind, uh, Kyron Whitfield's already picked off one. And with this wind, passing can be unpredictable. And Savages may have an opportunity to score as well on a Salisaw pass. They they don't have a receiver. This may be a running game. I don't know. Well, they don't have anybody 
immediately by the quarterback. Now nah, they're just going to keep a keep it up the middle. Quarterback. Wow, Brandon just delivered a blow as Kyler Cupid gets off the bottom of that pile. So he sort of held him up, and then Brandon came across and just leveled him. That was a hard hit, and that's going to result in second and ten. And Savages may have burned a timeout because with that no gain, 138 left on the clock, they could get a couple of stops. Timeout on the field. We'll have a word from one of our sponsors. We'll be right back. You're watching Brookwood Savage Football on the Brookwood Network. They've been supporting the Savages for a very long time. Bailey Lumber Company, a family-owned tradition in Broken Bow for over 80 years. Located just five miles east of Broken Bow, they're your go-to destination for all your lumber needs with everything you'd expect from a big store with the added charm of hometown service and competitive pricing. Need your materials delivered? Bailey Lumber Company will help you with convenient delivery options. Bailey Lumber Company, supporting the Savages. Yeah, you see the Savage defense setting up, and uh, it looked like they may be tri – Salisaw has trips split the far side. They are going to throw the ball. That's a fumble. That ball went down the ground. And so – and that's the rule. That is not a forward pass, and so it's still a live ball even if it's incomplete. And so the Black Diamonds digging themselves into a hole, and Savage has called timeout, I believe, again. And so this is a big third down as it is going to be – Third and a mile. The line to gain is the 47-yard line. And we're going to stay right here and talk things over. So that's a uh, – you know what? That actually might have been intended to be a double pass. I think it probably was because I don't know why you throw it backward. And a double pass, you throw it to one game. If, if, if it's a forward pass, you can't pass it again. But if you throw it backward, it's just a lateral. And so they may have had the, the person who's receiver on that, the player was going to throw it again downfield, a trick play. It backfired on the Black Diamonds as the uh, ball was incomplete. But it's not incompletion, incompletion on a backward pass. And so it was a fumble. And that moves them back further in their own territory against a stiff win. If the Savage Savages can get a stop here, then they can get good field position and have an opportunity to score before this half goes out. The line to gain is the 47, and the ball is uh, all the way back at the 26. Oh, and there's pressure on the quarterback. That's a screen, and oh, just taken down by Bailey. Jace Anderson also there, but well read by Quinlan Bailey on that screen. He went right through the screen, right to the receiver, dropped him in his tracks, and the Savages have burned their timeout to stop the clock at 122. They'll have an opportunity for a return. Again, we're going to stay right here. Savages, man, that was, a, that was a great series of defensive plays. As good tackling by Brokobo. Uh, uh, one mistake by Salisaw put them back. But that, that opportunity, <laughs> uh, Savages, and also a great job of the coaching staff calling those timeouts, preserving that clock, realizing that, hey, guys, we're going to get this ball back. And uh, against this win, they won't be able to kick it 60 yards downfield. And so... We may have another opportunity to score. Well executed by the players. That's exactly what happened. Got to be happy with uh, the way that they performed on that defensive series, as that netted a uh, that that netted a total of, I believe, minus 11 yards for the Black Diamonds. Great defense by Broken Bow, and they uh, they have Whitfield back deep to receive. And that's always dangerous for an opposing team. Let's see. Uh, he's going to roll out. Looks like he's going to try to roll out, just try to draw the Savage defenders off and kick it. And it takes a Savage bounce. It's going to go out in great field position right about the 48, 49-yard line. So called on the Savages, and that's going to move them back five yards. And they will replay first down. But from – and I, I said it was at the 48. It was actually the 49-yard line. And so that's going to move them back to the 44-yard line, and that's where they'll start this play. Same play, I guess. Oh, and the wind is picked up. <laughs> Boy, it's play. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is blowing hard once again. Clay back in the pocket. Has Bailey back there with him. Has a little bit of pressure. Rolls out, and then he's taken down, and that's a, one thing you read. That looked like a late hit. I guess the whistle wasn't blown. There's a penalty, and that's going to be for a late hit. And Clay slow getting up. 
And there was a very late hit. I think that's what the flag is for, is after Clay was down, a black diamond came in and dropped his shoulder into him. So let's see what this, let's wait here and see what this, they're indicating the ball was recovered by Salasaw. Now let's see what the penalty is. Here's the referee with the call. Nope, no flag. Wave the flag off. All right, first and 10 for Salasaw now. They have one timeout left, and they have one minute to try to get in the end zone. Again, if they do, they, they probably are going to have to try to throw the ball. And so Savages can go after that pass, too. There's holding on Cupid. And Cupid still gets back, and he's sacked, and that's going to – that may do it. Kyler Cupid did a great job as he had, had gotten past his blocker, was coming toward the quarterback, and you can see like he was had his jersey and shoulder pad pulled back behind him and still managed to break loose and get to the quarterback. Good job on the rush, loss of two on the sack, second and 12, 34 seconds and ticking, and then there's a movement, illegal motion, or illegal procedure, and that's gonna move the ball further back, and now, and Black Diamonds may be uh, willing to fall on the ball and go in with a three-point lead. Let's see, 33 seconds left, second and 17. Twins split out to the near side and the far side. Four receivers split out, single back in the backfield with the quarterback. Backpedaling and has some pressure flushed out of the pocket by Cubitt once again, thrown and immediately tackled. Complete, but immediately tackled by Frazier at the 35, and that's probably going to do it. Clock still ticking, 22 seconds, 21. That, oh, they do have a timeout. So they're going to call timeout. We're going to stay right here and uh, see head coach Rod Davis walking in to talk to his defense about this. Uh, Salisaw burns their last time out with 20.7 seconds left. That was a ni nice pressure by the Savage defensive pass rush and a good tackle in the open field. Ball still is not to the original line of scrimmage. Savages have reacted well to, to adversity. As they were driving, they turn over the ball in the first, you know, in that first drive and then Following that, marched 63 yards down the field. Now following a turnover, the defense steps up and forces uh, a play for a loss and then an immediate tackle, which puts the Black Diamonds in a third and long situation. Back pass, pressure, throws it towards the sideline incomplete, and that's going to stop the clock on fourth down. That might have been a mistake instead of taking a knee. Because now with 16.3 seconds left, it's fourth down, and the Black Diamonds are going to have to punt or go for it and give the Savages an opportunity to take a shot at the end zone maybe. They're going to talk things over. We're going to stay right here once again. I think that might have been – well, actually, that's not a timeout. They don't have any left, so the clock – they're going to take a delay of game penalty, I guess. But the clock's not – that was an incomplete pass, so the, the delay of game will not take any time off the clock as there's seven seconds left on the play clock. Stiff wind getting stiffer as rolls out to the side, kicks the ball. Oh, look at that wind. That came off his foot, and it's going to take a Savage bounce out of bounds. And the Savages are going to have eight seconds. They need to put about a second and a half back on the clock. It was at about 8.5 and ticked long after. It might have been at nine. It kept ticking long after the ball was out. The Savages aren't going to have time for another play with this wind, which this may be one of those Hail Mary plays. Uh, Clay does have the arm to put it in the end zone. And has a couple of receivers that could get down there. And so you see the uh, Salisaw defense. Looks like they come out with five defensive backs. Yeah, Savage is going to safety formation. They're not going to try to take a shot at the end zone. Just going to go in, uh, kneel it, go in with a, just a three-point deficit as they did a very good defensive stand and uh, have the momentum going into the second half. And that's going to be it for first half of play. Well, after one half, it is the Salisaw Black Diamonds 10, Brooklyn Savages 7, but the Savages have all the momentum going into the locker room. We're going to take a break here. May bring you the, uh, some halftime special. Savage Pride marching band may or may not perform. I don't know. They're going to march at uh, district. They're not going to They're not going to perform, but they're not going to march tonight. But uh, we'll take some breaks here from sponsors. We'll be back. You're watching Brooklyn Savage football on the, on the uh, Brooklyn Network.
At McCurtain County National Bank, we are continually seeking ways to meet the changing needs of our customers. We offer a full range of services, such as free checking, online and mobile banking, as well as great rates on cabin and construction loans. We're providing results through better service while giving you a greater value for your dollar. Visit us on the web at mcnbonline.com. McCurtain County National Bank in Idabel, Broken Bow, Hochitown, and Valiant. Yeah, got a pretty big fender bender here. Don't worry, State Farm's got you covered. <sighs> That's great to hear. Robin, what's going on? We're gonna get you a tow truck, Mike. Thank you. Bro, fender bender going on. Fender bender. Fender bender. Fender bender. Fender bender. Everybody remain calm. No reason to panic. Go with the one that's here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Evan Smalling at 580-584-7277. Hey, welcome back. This is actually the Salisaw Marching Band. It's going to perform here at halftime. Savage's Pride Marching Band will not, but we'll uh, go ahead and leave it on them. Let's, uh, as they announced in the uh, homecoming ceremony, the two-time state championship Salisaw Marching Band. So we'll see how good they are.
Well, second half action about to be underway. Chris Chandler back here at uh, Perry F. Lattimore Stadium. Savage is going to kick off. They, uh, they trail 10-7 to to start off this second half against the South Salt Black Diamonds on homecoming night here for the Black Diamonds. And uh, good news about kicking off in the second half is you have that win behind you. All the two touchdowns, both touchdown drives uh, in this game were scored with the wind at their back, and it has picked, even picked up a little more than it did in the first half. Silva to do the honors. Usually comes down around the 30. Let's see where this one goes. It sails all the way to the 20, and that's filled right there in a fair catch at the 21. That's a pretty good kick. 21, not a bad place for the Savages to pin the Diamonds back to on a kickoff. And so that's where they'll set up shop. Had to kick it through the end zone. It would have been at the 20. So just, I guess it looks like they're going to put it to 22, but still. I don't First and 10, 22. Savages want to continue that momentum, especially the defensive momentum they had going in at the half. As again, Savages still have outgained in just raw yardage the Black Diamonds, but field position has been the difference. Savages have one turnover, as do the Black Diamonds. There's a handoff looking up the middle for yardage. Doesn't get it as it's stacked up by the entire Savage interior. That's Kyler Cupid in there, Hoover. Medoc, Kyler Cupid is uh, pumped up, as he should be, having a great game tonight. Looked like Brandon might have been in there as well. That got one yard, brings up a second and nine. It would be great if Savages could uh, force a three and out and get the ball back in excellent field position. Single receiver split out the far side, single to the near side, a slot back and a running back. Fay play action looking toward the sideline. He's pursued by Braley. The ball goes out of bounds. That may be grounding. Not sure what they're, they've changed that rule. They call it an incomplete pass. There's no flag. But that should, <laughs> all right, it's been a sack. Great pressure by Quinlan Bailey on the quarterback, and he just kind of chucked. He did get outside the hash marks. And threw it out of bounds. And they have changed that rule in high school, at least. It's and it, the, the purpose is to protect the quarterback, generally the most uh, vulnerable player on the field. And so they managed to get an incomplete pass, but that brings up a third and long, third and nine. And Savages are hitting on all cylinders defensively. Oh, wait a minute. What is going on here? Okay. I saw the Savage players walking back, and I thought, is this another penalty? But... Not sure what the officiating crew is talking over there. As it's an incomplete pass. It's second, or sorry, third and nine. Run for one, incomplete pass, third down, nine. Here we are. Okay, let's, uh, clock's right. They stop. Oh, it's the clock. The clock says 112. That's a problem. That's a problem. The clock says 112. Obviously, quite a bit more than that left in this. <laughs> period so uh yeah 11 25 now we got things right clock's right savage is looking to hold here and force a punt single back in the backfield with the quarterbacks they send a man in motion to the far side that he's going to wheel route yeah, quarterback takes off running and takes his legs out from under him the ball is fumbled and the savages recover let's see what the call is savage is indicating they recovered ball went over there and let's see it, 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 there's a savage that comes up with it yeah, they're saying it went out of bounds. That was a – or either it went out of bounds or the ground caused the fumble. And I didn't see who the Savage was because the ball popped out. I was following the ball. But somebody on the Savage defense took the legs out from under the quarterback and forced that hard hit. Great defensive stand by Broken Bow. And uh, the, the fumble was actually the longest gain by the Black Diamonds. And so now they, what they're, they're going to run it out to the side. And it looks like they're going to fake it. That's a holding call. And he kicks it down the sideline. There's a penalty in the backfield. That is almost always an illegal block in the back or holding. The kick, the punt went out of bounds at about midfield. And so Savages may decline the penalty. I'm not sure. Let's see what the call is. It's going to be a face mask, and I'm Savages will take that. That's a 15-yarder. Face mask is the call. And so, yeah, they're going to send the punt return team back on the field because that, that face mask would move the ball back into about the 10-yard line. 
with the wind in their face. As my good buddy Skip Copeland pointed out, and that's a good call. All right, they are marching it back. And it's going to go all the way back to about the, uh, well, it should be at the 10-yard line. At the 21. Okay. At the 21? <laughs> so a, a five-yard penalty, I guess unintentional face mask. Still, they're going to have to kick it again. Here's the snap. Here's the punt. And this is going to be returnable, possibly. Ball bounces. No, it's not going to be. As Whitfield <laughs> bends down like in a, in apparent uh, anguish over the ball just kind of stopping there. So it winds up in about the same place. It was worth the uh, gamble to re-kick, though, because you either you get another bad punt, a block, or uh, in the hands of Whitfield. Excellent field position for the Savages, though. Great defensive stop, a three and out. And uh, as a result, they have the ball at their own 48-yard line with a first and 10. Opportunity to take the lead in this ball game. 10:59 left, third period. Savages trail 10 to seven, but at first and 10 in great field position. Clay in the backfield. Resplit, uh, twin split out the far side. Hand off. No fake. Good play action. Throws. Oh, a low throw as he actually had Tenahero open at about the 40. Past the line of scrimmage. I say bad throw. It might have. It's possible that was tipped to the line of scrimmage. But that was a good route and pretty good protection as uh, Clay able to sit back in the pocket and let that play develop. Incompletion brings up a second and 10. Not much time went off the clock. 10.55 left in the third period. Savage, I believe, send Hurst and Tenahero out to the far side. Whitfield and Champagne, I believe, out to the near side. Bailey in the backfield with Clay. Clay back pass. Looking. Oh, it's a screen. It's Bailey, and he gets loose. Eh, eh, does not get loose. I thought he broke that tackle, but uh, brought down just across. It does get it into the barely, but into the Black Diamonds into the field. That's going to bring up a third, and let's call it a long seven. Line to gain is the 42. Ball's at the uh, 49 and three quarters for you Harry Potter fans. Uh, so it looks like they're going to split Tenahero and Hurst out the far sideline, sending uh, trips out there as they send Whitfield out there as well. Bailey in the backfield. Champagne, uh, sole receiver to the near side, and there's some pressure, grabs the jersey, and that's a sack as... Good sportsmanship shown by number 50 there for Salisaw, patting, make it checking on Anthony Clay, make sure he's all right, patting him on the shoulder, but that sack uh, sticks the Savages back outside the chains, and they will be forced to punt, albeit with a uh, the benefit of this wind instead of the detriment of it. And so my, normally Tenahero uh, kicks a low rugby-style kick. He may hang this one up in that stratosphere and see if the wind will take it. Let's see. Nope. Same style, it is par It is blocked. And it takes a big savage bounce after the block. Man, it is picked up. Bailey going to the end zone. I think you can't advance a muff. That's not a muff punt. That was blocked at the line of scrimmage, so that's not a touchdown. That's going to disappoint the Savage fans. But unless uh, Savage fans are saying that one of the, not only after the block, one of the Black Diamonds touched it, but it wouldn't matter because it would be a dead ball either way. I think. And Rod Davis out there on the field discussing it with the back judge. He's getting clarification on the call. And he's, you saw when the he's asking who has possession and once the uh, official pointed toward the you know, Salisaw way, and I pointed toward the Savage into the end zone, but it's Salisaw's ball. He walks off in disgust. Anyway, uh, first and ten, Black Diamonds. Quarterback has two backs in the backfield, and one of them, uh, oh, wow, got past. Still going. Savage's going to have to be better tacklers than that as he broke about three tackles. Good running, but poor tackling. And so following that block and the controversy around the Savage defense might not, not have been ready. He had to be ready to play with the ball staff to give up one of the biggest runs up the middle, if not the biggest run up the middle all night. All the way to 45, first and 10 for Salisil. Their own 45, it's just state. Same, uh, almost a double back formation. Oh, he's taken down by Bailey in the backfield. 
crushing hit. Quentin Bailey coming through there. And so that's actually should be, uh, I don't they marked it at the 45. He didn't get, I, mean, I thought it was at the 44. I don't think he got up there. He leaned forward at the end and was still at the 44. Let's call it a no game, though. Tackle for no game by Bailey, so the ball is going to be at the 45, second and 10. And so Salisal is going to abandon, I believe, that two back. I say two backs with the quarterback in the backfield and split out trips to the far side. Looks like maybe a passing play coming up. And it's quarterback keeper. He's running up the middle, and he is hit hard and taken down by Bailey. Oh, man, gain of about three, but a punishing blow by Quinlan Bailey at the end of that. And that's the kind of uh, hit that you'll feel tomorrow and on Sunday. Whoa, and they spot the ball at the, <laughs> again, I, I didn't think it was at the 49. But even with that spot, it's still just a uh, gain of four. Let's call it third or a gain of yeah, four. Let's call it third and six. Here's a throw out into the flat, and he's so oh, missed tackle. Gets loose down the sideline. That's the same. That's the same player that scored. And there's a flag called over there for a late hit. And that is out on the sideline, but you got to blow the whistle, ref. That uh, No whistle was blown as he was struggling. But uh, And I don't have a roster. I don't know who number two is, but I, that's the same kid that they threw the ball out in the sideline, and he took off. Fisher, he's the one... Oh, <laughs> uh, number two for Salisaw is the same player that took off down the sideline and scored on that just kind of a little bit of a wheel route. So now Salisaw threatening following the penalty. And their lineup, kind of a power formation, may see a double lead keeper by the quarterback. That's exactly what they have. Going outside, and he is taken down by Whitfield out of bounds. But now before gaining about three or four. And so running off, off tackle toward that far side. This is, and this kind of, when you see this power formations and power running plays, this is where uh, the, the absence of Aiden Coley uh, hurts the Savages the most is they don't have the other powerful linebacker to stop on the run on the outside. And so it's going to be second down, hand off up the middle. And he's wrapped up and taken down by Maddock. Maddock got through there, made contact in the backfield. And then the ball carrier falls forward for a foot. And so that brings up a big third down. As Savages like to get a stop here and force a decision. Actually like to get a turnover. This is in the red zone. Last time in this position, Savages did get a stop and forced a field goal attempt. It was good. And that's how come it's 10-7. to Look like they may be... Uh, they just one back in the backfield with the quarterback. They may try a hard count. That's exactly what they did. Savages stay on sides, though. And so they're going to snap it. Quarterback keeper running for it, and he gets enough for the first down. Taken down by Bailey, but not until he crosses the 15-yard line. And so that's going to move the chains and get another Salisaw first down. And they're down inside the 15 to the 14, and that's going to be first and 10. First and 10 Black Diamonds. 6.15 left, third period. They lead 10 to 7. Savages now looking to get a stop. Now power formation back. They're basically a lineman lined up in front of the back and probably a lead play. And, oh, yep, that is. And, oh, missed tackle. One Savage got through there but just couldn't bring it. That was uh, Medoc. Good position. Good, getting, good job getting through the line but unable to bring the ball carrier down. So results in a gain of about four. Let's call it second and six. And so inside, just inside the 10, the nine-yard line. Let's call it second and five. Line to gain is the four. Same formation. Quarterback under center, takes the ball, drops back, hands off, same, basically same play, and this time he stopped for very short yardage. Falls forward, but does not get to the five, so no first down. As, uh, has to get a yard across the five to score. I mean, to not score, but to move the chains. Ball's marked. Let's call it a gain of one from the nine to the eight. Another big third down. Savage is facing another third down where if they can get a stop, likely put the Black Diamonds in the position of attempting a field goal. Let's see what happens here. And uh, 
Uh, power formation again with an extra blocker here over between the tackle and the guard in the backfield. On the right side this time, handoff go the other way. Now quarterback's going the other way and gets through the hands of one tackler. Flag on the play. And I think this, let's see what the flag is. It is going to be called a face mask against the Savages, and so that's going to be enough for a first down, half the distance to go. First and goal, four more downs for the Black Diamonds. Certainly, I'm certain they'll take that penalty. 447 left, third period, 10 7 to score. Black Diamonds lead by three, but are driving. So it does advance it to the four yard line. First and goal from the four, and you're going to see about three power formation plays as they're going to look for, look to just drive it over the Savages. So, Black Diamonds, yeah, they're going to measure it. I guess it, well, it was a, I guess it was an unintentional face mask, so it's a five-yard call, and maybe from the point, they didn't, maybe they did not get it. The, if they didn't get the first down. It is, they're indicating that they did get it first and go. They, uh, so that brings up first and goal from the four, and you're going to see a power formation and uh, probably about uh, hopefully three lead plays, unsuccessful ones for the Savages. Nope, drop back pass, throw it in the end zone, and that was a touchdown. Yeah, that was easy. Released in the end zone, just kind of threw it up there, or just done a just a lob as he was wide open in the end zone. And so, following the blocked punt, the Black Diamonds marched downfield and put it in the end zone to start off the second half. That was their second possession. 441 left, 16 7. Savages. Uh, a little bit on their heels after that. Going to have to respond to this. So now we have a 10-point ball game. It's 17-7. Uh, to 7. Salisaw leads midway through the third quarter. We'll be back after these messages from our sponsors. You're watching Bergamo's Savage Football on the Bergamo Network. At McCurtain County National Bank, we are continually seeking ways to meet the changing needs of our customers. We offer a full range of services, such as free checking, online and mobile banking, as well as great rates on cabin and construction loans. We're providing results through better service while giving you a greater value for your dollar. Visit us on the web at mcnbonline.com. McCurtain County National Bank in Idabel, Broken Bow, Hochitown, and Valiant. Ah, Savage Dance Team. Looking lively as uh, it's a Savage Pride marching band. Their football team, a little bit on the heels. Dance team is, uh, well, let's say chill, <laughs> as is everybody in the stands. Is uh, the uh, It's interesting. First time I've said this this year, and I'm not complaining. It's I'm just underdressed, but there is actually a wind chill factor here tonight. It's, it's probably about a wind chill, about 55 in these stands. Again, that is that is football weather, though, and uh, for one, I welcome it. Going to be kicking off the Savages, looking for a spark here as uh, the ball is going to be kind of squib kicked across the middle. It's going to be returned, though, by Rupp. Watch out. Rupp has a blocker. Gets to midfield. Rupp to the 45, all the way to the 42-yard line. Great run. Max Rupp reacted to that football, and that's the spark the Savage needed. Savages... He, he did, and that was an excellent return as he just took off toward this sideline boundary, picked up a really good block, and I did not see who made it. Somebody in that first tier. Uh, was that two? Yeah, Frazier gave a, got a great block and sprung Rupp, and he did what he needed to do, just running toward the boundary, turning it up. Savages have excellent field position as they'll start off this possession for the 41-yard line of the Black Diamonds. And a Harrow and Whitfield splits the far side. Rocky Baker in at the slot, comes this way. Handoff, Bailey up the middle, has some running room, but not much. Gets across the 40 and not much else. 39, let's call it a gain of two. That's going to bring up a second and eight. 
Rocky Baker in the mix again over there at that slot back as an extra blocking back, but also uh, earlier a receiver as well. And now they're splitting Baker out to the far sideline, and they form trips along with Whitfield and Tenejero. Bailey in the backfield again. Backpedaling and steps in the pocket. Clay has time to throw, finds an open man. Watch out, it's Baker, 20, 35, 30. Still going across the 30, enough for the first down. Move the chain, Savage is going to get a first down inside the 30-yard line. Well-designed play as they had the rest of the other two receivers over there. Tidaharo and Whitfield ran off the coverage. Baylor came, uh, Baker came back underneath. Clay stepped up, found him in the uh, open field, and Baker did the rest to move the chains. First and 10, Brokobo, 29-yard line. Baker still split out to the far sideline. Champagne and Tenehero to the near sideline. Whitfield there uh, looking at the sideline saying, hey, where do I line up? Seven seconds left on the clock. And that may be illegal motion as they weren't set long enough. And that may move it back five yards on Broken Bow. Illegal procedure. Let's see what the call is. Coaching staff's not going to like that. Is giving up yardage uh, on a middle mistake. Just five, but enough to move them back outside the 30, 34-yard line. Brings up a first and 15. Tenehero comes out, Rupp goes in. Baker still at the far sideline. Clay and Bailey in the backfield. Champagne near the, on the near sideline along with Whitfield. Looking back to pass, rolls out of the pocket, and he is in trouble, and he's going to get sacked again. Driven to the turf, and that's just uh, after getting a first down, the Savages have uh, gone backwards two plays in a row, one on their own accord and once uh, with a huge sack. As that's all the way back to the 47-yard line. Brings up a second and 28. Sorry, third and 28. No, second and 28. They did replay first down, so at least they get a couple of plays to try to get it, but going to have to do a little better job of protecting or Clay's going to have to roll out of the pocket. As that was a loss of 23. Here's a snap, handoff. That's our loss 13 to Whitfield in. Can't get loose. And oh, man, he does. Oh, my. I should never, I should never say that Kyron Whitfield can't get loose until he's down. He was dead to rights. Caught had a, uh, and, and again, good defense is the pursuit. The rest of the Black Diamonds got over there, but he got loose somehow, magically, from the first would be tackler. But again, his tackle for another loss. Savage is actually now at midfield. Facing third and a mile, third and 31. Line to gain is the 19-yard line. So uh, Savage is going to have to get set. Play clock down to six. Play clock ticking to five. They're going to have to burn a timeout, or they're going to get a delay of game penalty. And they do, and that is going to frustrate the coaching staff. And uh, yeah, nothing after a brilliant start with a return by Rupp and a first down. Uh, everything's gone wrong the last three plays. Uh, time out on the field. We'll take a break. Have a message from our sponsor. We'll be right back. You're watching Broken Bow Savage Football on the Broken Network. At McCurtain County National Bank, we are continually seeking ways to meet the changing needs of our customers. We offer a full range of services, such as free checking, online and mobile banking, as well as great rates on cabin and construction loans. We're providing results through better service while giving you a greater value for your dollar. Visit us on the web at mcnbonline.com. McCurtain County National Bank in Idabel, Broken Bow, Hochitown, and Valiant. Well, Savages had to burn their first time out of this half. They trail 17-7, uh, 146 left, third quarter, but they have third and 31, and uh, going to have to give Clay time for the receivers to get downfield in order to convert this, and the, the Black Diamond showing blitz. They do have some corner pressure. Oh, good job picking it up, but then he uh, gets loose and sacks Clay once again. So three straight plays for loss. Good defense. There's a Salisaw defender down, so there's going to be a, a timeout for injury, and so uh, we'll take one as well. Quickly have a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. You're watching Brokobo Savage Football on the Brokobo Network.
If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Evan Smalling in Broken Bow today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, Savage is once again in punt formation in about this same place last time. Uh, the punt was blocked, so going to have to prevent that. Uh, and looks at Salisaw has a guy late getting on as they have a player running on as the ball is snapped, running toward this side. And that punt's going to take a Savage bounce. It does, rolling up farther inside, inside the 15. Oh, nice punt. That's going to be great net punting as it's going to roll inside the 10-yard line to about the 9. And that's where the Savages will down it. So uh, great punt. That tip. Yes. That ball went yeah, about 51 yards net. So good job by Broken Bow. That's what, that's what they needed after having field position, having the ball at the 29-yard uh, line. So uh, results in pitting the Black Diamonds back inside their 10-yard line, but Savages get no points in the first or third quarter, just has a minute 19 left. 17-7 your score. Savages looking to maybe get a turnover here, or create a punt down at that end. That's a good way to start off that defensive uh, series as they stop the quarterback on a run for about two, possibly three. Going to mark it at the... Uh, uh, let's well, let's call it four. Marks it at the 13-yard line. So gain of four brings up second and six. Clock still running, and uh, I'm sure the Black Diamonds are happy to let that clock run as the, the wind is in their face. So they probably won't snap the uh, football until the play clock is down to about five seconds. It's at 12 right now. Quarterback looking, and that's exactly what they're going <laughs> to They're going to sit back until... Play clock at five, four, there we go. Snap it, runoff tackle, taken down. I believe that was Cupid in there, along with Hoover. Hoover, uh, good sportsmanship by Hoover, helping up the quarterback. And that was actually the, uh, yeah, that was the Hoover, Hurst, and Cupid combo. Stopping the uh, Black Diamonds for a short game. And yeah, that's a... Uh, and there's 14 seconds left. The clock's ticking. That's going to do it for three quarters of play. And they'll go back to the other end. Nice defensive stand by Broken Bow. Need to have one more, though. It's going to be third and three when we come back. They've been supporting the Savages for a very long time. Bailey Lumber Company, a family-owned tradition in Broken Bow for over 80 years. Located just five miles east of Broken Bow, they're your go-to destination for all your lumber needs with everything you'd expect from a big store with the added charm of hometown service and competitive pricing. Need your materials delivered? Bailey Lumber Company will help you with convenient delivery options. Bailey Lumber Company, supporting the Savages. Back to action, snap, handoff, off tackle, has some running room, and the question is, did he get enough? I don't think he did. A good hold by the Savages as he's stopped just short of the first down. And so that's going to force a punting situation. Now the wind is at their back, but they're going to be inside their own. The punter's going to be inside his own 10-yard line. I say, I'm, and I'm assuming there's going to be a punter. I'm assuming they're not going to go for it on fourth and one with a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter. Inside the 10. One of the things they made, I mean, it's fourth and one. Savage is definitely going to have to have discipline and watch the ball, not go on his hard count, and also be aware of the fake punt. And keep in mind, this is the thing. With punters that roll out and do that rugby-style punt, they could, if they see a gap, they could just keep running. So uh, Savages are going to drop Whitfield back to return, but they're going to have uh, 
a lot of eyes on the punter, and they may just play contain. And he's taking off. Looks like he's going to fake it. He is going to fake it. He's going to run toward the boundary, and he's taking down. Oh, did he get it? Oh, that's going to be a horse collar tackle called on Brandon. And the thing is, he had the shirt. His hand wasn't inside the shoulder pads, but that's just going to be an automatic first down. And that is unfortunate because Adrian Brandon made the tackle inside the 20, but inside the 19, but they're going to mark it off, and by virtue of a penalty, the Salisau Black Diamonds are going to get another set of downs. And it's going to be a long penalty. It's going to bring it up to about the 30-yard line. Yeah, the 20, uh, sorry, it's got to be to the 34-yard line. So first and 10 by virtue of a penalty to the 34-yard line. Zalasaw, four new downs, 11.07 left, and they may keep the ball. They have a 10-point lead, a two-possession lead. They may keep it on the ground after this, try to eat up that clock. That's exactly what they're going to do. Is a quarterback goes down in the backfield, and somebody got in there. He either slipped or somebody got to him, and I believe somebody might have got to him. A loss of three. Nice job by the Savages firing through that gap and getting to the quarterback. Not sure who made that tackle. I believe Brown's in the lineup for the Savages as well. He might have been the one that made the tackle. That brings up a second 14. Let's call it a loss of four. Second 14, back to pass. They are going to throw the ball or attempt to anyway. Ball's launched, and it's going to be ho oh! It was complete tackle made by Nocum, but as soon as that ball was released and it wasn't, did they wave it off? No, nope. they called it complete. But I saw, as soon as the ball was released, I saw I saw Whitfield breaking on it. Couldn't get there in time. So it is complete. He was taken down and bounce clock continues to run. That's going to bring third and let's call it four. And so, once again, single back in the backfield with quarterback, quarterback keeper, and he's taken down and almost taken the ball. It looked like he was trying to throw the ball forward, and then Sam Hurst in there on the tackle, but Kyler Cupid in there as well. It looked like uh, Bailey almost ripped the quarterback out of the fo- uh, football out of the quarterback's hands. Or rip the quarterback out of the football's hands, if you will. He was going to rip something in there. That was a good defensive play, though. and results in a big loss, and that is going to force the Black Diamonds to punt, or maybe not. Who knows? Again, I mean, they succeeded on the last one via, via penalty. They may try that again, and he's going to run out. This time he is going to kick it, and this is going to be returnable. It's going to take a bounce into the hands of Whitfield. Takes the ball at the 38, and... There's going to be Savage fans are furious after that. Is there what looked like a clean block? They all jumped up. Flag was thrown, and so that's going to march it further back. And uh, they do not like the call. I don't like the call either. One thing I will note, though, is uh, it was behind the play, so it did not have an effect on the return. And so Savage is... Uh, going to start from inside their 20-yard line as that's going to be the illegal block in the back. March back for about the 25-26, and let's see where they wind up. Yeah. Savage is, um, yeah, they're marching all the way inside the 15. And about the 13. Let's call it the 13. So Savage is start off first and 10th to 13-yard line. 8.52 left. They have to score twice. And so, against the wind, have their work cut out for them. Alone in the backfield, Clay, four receivers split out. Launches it up, and it's Whitfield! Goes out against the football! He's still up to midfield! Whitfield dragging defenders, and then he's bulldog. That should be a penalty. And the savage bitch is furious. He was driven headfirst into the turf out of bounds, no flag, but it is a first down. What a tremendous play from inside the 10 as Whitfield went up and got the ball, kept his feet, and dragged two defenders across midfield. First and 10, Broken Bow at the 47-yard line of Salisaw, already going hurry up, up tempo offense, Hurst to the near side. And Tenejero 
jogging to the far side. Play clock at 10. Bailey and Whitfield in the backfield. Play clock at 5. Snap. Clay takes the snap, hands to Whitfield, and this time he's swarmed in the backfield. And the whistle's blown dead. He got loose from one tackler, but the whistle was blown, and so that's going to stop the play. Let's call it a loss of 5. That's going to bring up 2nd and 15. Again, play designed to get Whitfield with the ball in open space. And I don't. I, I think the Black Diamonds probably are assigning three guys to watch Whitfield, so they're going to go ahead and stick him over uh, on the far side. Champagne split to the far boundary. Hurst and Tenejero to the near boundary. Bailey in the backfield with Clay. Clay across the middle, right into the head. was a telegraph, and that's an interception. There's a block in the back. And they're going to call that. There was a block in the back by blow to the Savage. They had driven down a tremendous catch. 